Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affair show on television. On The Point of View, we usually pick the right topics and we ask our guests the relevant questions on the issues that matter to you. We're live tonight and we'll be looking at basic education. We'll be taking you around the country to show you the state of some of our basic schools. We are told over 5,000 basic schools are either under trees or under sheds or lack the right infrastructure. What does that mean for the future of our children? We juxtapose that with other key issues around lack of furniture, lack of sanitation facilities, and other precarious conditions under which students study in the country. We'll speak to some experts as well on the show tonight. It's interactive. Send us your own concerns, your experiences. We are parents watching the show. How concerned are you about the state of basic education in our country? Send your thoughts on the WhatsApp number that we'll be putting on the screen shortly. We'll be right back with the details. Bell Beverages, Bell Chill and Win Promotion in Amafi 2022 year yet there. To our favorite Bell drink, say a Tamarinda, Bell Cola, Puka, Big Boss, Squeeze, Breeze, Bell Malt, and a Yaki Kahubia. Why one washes with the other 20? Fashion look, which you would deem and contact a Kahu. A fail for Bell Beverages Depot, and as a one accredited distributor, sir, one more or memoir fana bebia. Uber to media, Chedia P, our Bell Chill and Win Promotion, and Yedo TV, radio, and a social media. So, a Chedia Bitter, sir, there are Munyama Bibria, Wope, Bell Product, watch a dear Bibri, and a Cradia which we are could did. The final raffle draw no ube to me the Kia Picanto and Mono Chow. Bell Chill and Win Promotion there will be a winner. So pe mun che che mu be a friend 0544-335-800. Afe so kayo, se bell beverages and will jump me a gana so FDA a jibidian kratui atum. Welcome back. So tonight we'll be taking you across Ghana's 16 regions to show you the state of some of our basic schools. It's a really serious situation. We're having discussion at a time where Free SHS has swallowed a chunk of our educational budget. But what we have not said is that Ghana's GDP percentage spend on education has reduced from 7.6% in 2012 to around 4.6% in 2021. That suggests a downward trajectory in educational spending. Now that sounds counterintuitive. One of the major areas in which education has suffered is in the area of basic education. Here are a few facts before we take you across the country. The, in a, an October 2021 report put together by a number of partners including the Africa Education Watch titled Education Spike Campaign, a briefing paper on privatization in Ghana. It says among other things that after an analysis of the basic data available, more than 400,000 children, approximately one in four pre-primary age children, are still not enrolled in kindergarten, with over 147,000 dropping out between KG and junior high school. Additionally, the distribution of learning outcomes has been inequitable, with learners in public schools recording lower academic attainment compared to their counterparts in private schools. So that's the first problem. Over 400,000 kg going kids not in school, almost 150,000 dropping out between kindergarten and JHS. The second big fact is that there are 15,391 junior high primary schools, 15,000 primary schools, but only 11,000 JHSs. That means that 4,000 primary schools do not have access to JHS. Now, in communities where the JHS is far from the locality, it means that the child may terminate their education after class six. So there are 4,000 primary schools without JHS. But I think the most serious fact is this one. According to the report, quoting the Ministry of Education, there are 5,403 schools under trees, sheds, 
and dilapidated structures across the country. 5,403 schools, not human beings, schools, under trees, sheds, and dilapidated structures across the country. So tonight I'm going to start the journey from the Brong Ahafu region. There's a town called Abansere. It's in Brekum West. Our reporter Michael Sapong in Fum went there late last year to find out the state of a school with over 218 students. There are only three classroom blocks. It's a report that shows the seriousness of the situation in that region. Abansri is a farming community in the Brekun West district of the Buno region. The population of Abansri and its adjoining communities is close to 1,000. However, access to education in the community is becoming a challenge due to the inadequate number of classrooms. This three-unit classroom block was constructed by the Sunyani Central Rotary Club. However, with the increasing number of children in the community, the classrooms became inadequate. The community members organized themselves to put up this temporary three-classroom block. The structure is in a dilapidated state and is not conducive for teaching and learning. During a visit to Abansui, it was observed that most children who were supposed to be in school were seen loitering. The only crew of Abansui, Solomon Kofi Jase, has been speaking on the challenge of classrooms with City News. School down there, how they be brave. Mobile, someone who is here. In short, I send me brave. In short, my person can look fi. Ya bona, oya 2017, na rotary club, and you for a bear brave as a statue. We, a mobile, no, yeah, the two money, saying, can be here to set bone go cry. No, must say for a term being no, yeah, and get three classroom. And we are here some crown or crown or crown. Is there no Casa in Cranic Cra, two hundred and eighteen CCR? In the three cars, we are there between us a woman and our community, no, Asia and our boss, I'll start away. In chance in Cranic Betuson, I ask him. In the same Muslim, no, how the baby, okay, about concrete dancer in your cra. Some parents also spoke to City News team. Hmm, a whole marble plan say, woman P. Go yes, I know, I'm a Colano, Patano Crow, go home, but me a boot also. There's an Colano Mescu. Because Ama abai ane adi adi ya ya kaga na fuo. Tiba biya mkuu nu etu anu mausi ya diye nu. In fact, au kasa sawani sisi udu ni ba huu ya. Kami treba bi efro fusu kasa kau njindi. Baba biya umuti wa mausi ya diye nu na niya kwenye. Ewia mkuu nu kwa ewia neshi wa mungu suta nzu ebo amu. Inta amu mkuu nu be biro kwa mpoti fia mungu suta mungu school nu. Oka na kwa waso kwa mungu ewia suta nzu ebo nu. Ewia ba ewia beshi nu. Inta waso wa mkuu nti ya mpya na. Solomon Kofi Jase, the old crew of Abansui, is appealing for a new classroom block. Yeah, many people are saying that the money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money is not going to be able to do it. The money I am a resident of the Momo, Yanton, and the community. We are one acre land square. In the Mobi sister, as I say, I have been able to be a city that I am a man. In the best, I have been able to be a man. 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 Efforts to reach the authorities at the Brekun West District to speak on the issue were unsuccessful. Parents who have their walls at the Abansri Primary School are urging the Brekun West this is the assembly to come to their aid by constructing a new classroom block for the community. For my bansary, Michael Saponinfum, City News. So that was Michael Saponinfum reporting from a bansary in the Brekum West District. Now, this situation is not peculiar to that region. I'll take you next to the central region in the Asin South District. There's a town called Asin Tomfroko. Georgina Apia has been finding out 
the conditions under which students in that school study. The school was built many years ago. From KG to class six, a number of them study under very deplorable conditions. Here's a quick report. This is the state of the Ascent on Fukuro DA Primary School in the Ascent South District of the Central Region. The unstable classroom block, which was constructed by the community members as far back as 1961, has not seen any renovation by the government. The classroom block remained in a bad shape until it could no longer host the teachers and pupils. Kindergarten to stage 6 pupils now study under trees because of the poor state of their classroom blocks. A Get Fund classroom project, which was started under former President Kofor's era, is still not completed. Teachers tell City News teaching under such conditions is challenging. We have tried as much as possible to talk with the uh, leaders so that they will assist us in certain ways so that they will give us a comfortable place to sit for teaching and learning. But as I'm talking to you, we haven't seen any changes. And as the government told us to come back to school, we cannot be in that room again because when it's time for raining, we have to close and go back to the house or close the students so that they go back to the house. Because let's say when the, the, the rain carries storms and thunder, lightning and other dangerous uh, or disastrous uh, things, we have to be, be in a place that these disasters will not affect the students. The Apijahin of Asin attendance so traditional area and chief of Tumfukro, Nana Danfo Amwakon, in an interview with City News, disclosed that teachers in the school have threatened to seek for transfers if the situation remains unchanged. <laughs> Teacher <laughs> Samuel Sachi is the assembly member for the area. If there's no money, there's no money in the assembly on man. This emergency. So they're supposed to go and find some money to come and do whatever they want to do to help the, I mean, our, our children. I hope this is the best way. I hope say the uh, a few things are meeting the actual answer. I hope say the call no more now. My son no more the actual to see me. Now I want the feedback. Ah, uh, idea, idea, idea. But when I say my son, then you have to organize. Now my no. When I say that we look here, I project one year. And yeah, a better quarter. And the other, I think I said the same thing. I now say the other, I'm not cheap. I now say the other, pending for one hundred more more guys in the mass. I'm doing in the other Then the uncle and the dad cheat. So that was George and Pierre's report from Asin Tomfroko. It's in Asin South District. This report was filed February this year, so just a couple of months ago. So we started in BA. We've come down to Central Region. Let me take you now to the Savannah Region, where Richard Fogo has been following up on a school at a place called Dakuripe. Similar story. Children sit on the floor. Some of them write on their bellies. And this report was just a couple of months ago in March. Not enough furniture, the school has a leaky roof, and they don't have enough teachers. This is Richard Fogger's report from the Savannah region. It is 10.17 a.m. A nine-year-old Tahiru Nazifa, a primary six pupil of the Dakrupe DA Primary School, is teaching a combined class of KG 1 and 2 of her school. Ironically, she is supposed to be learning in her own class, but there is no teacher. She told me she decided to help her younger ones because they don't have a teacher. Class six, and you are teaching this class. Why are you teaching them? They don't have a teacher. They don't have a teacher. Uh, how about you, your class? Do you have a teacher? 
Yes. You have a teacher? Yes. So you come here to help your junior brothers and sisters? Yes. The school, located in the Krupe, a community of over 3,000 people in the Bole district, has only two teachers, the head teacher and his assistant. They are supposed to teach, mark exercises, and guide 167 pupils. The pupils, who are supposed to be in eight different classes, are combined in six. Children in most classes in this school sit on the floor and write on their bellies on floors that are not cemented. As if that is not harrowing enough, the roof of the school is ripping off. Seydou Dean is the assistant head teacher of the school. He told me the combination of the classes and lack of adequate teachers makes it impossible for them to follow the approved curricula. Because of what? Lack of the teacher. Because we have to, we have to run without following the curricula. But we have to engage these people, engage people. We have to engage our three classes or four classes before you will sort of mark all the regions, before you mark, you become tired. So our curriculum activity is not moving the systematic the way it is supposed to, uh, to move like genius and put laid out eight years and regulations. It's not moving the way. According to one class is for a teacher. We as we are facing a challenge here, we have only two. So there's some of the have to jump there. And the, the control of the school. The KG, especially the KG, no madam, we are only seeing male students, teachers in the school. So it's not easy to handle the KG. So the school is out of control. He also lamented about the state of the building. You know what, our structure is a It's a death trap. I'll just put that to be a death trap. Because if you go back, the space at the KG group, if the door falls on the child as well, that day we have to send the child either to the hospital. So to our structure here. Yeah. Assembly member for the area, Mohammed Abu Bakari, who was in the school to donate a number of dual decks to the school, said efforts to get the assembly and GES to address the school's challenges has not yielded any results. A worry to the community members and me as an assemblyman. I have followed up with uh, letters to assembly and also to our MP appealing for them to come and renovate this uh, building for us. But it's like whenever you go, there is no funds, we don't have funds. The community in itself has done a lot for the school. They built three uh, rooms for the school, they built uh, six uh, bedrooms for teachers as courtesies, they built three bedroom apartment for nurses and also did a, an extension to the health uh, center in the community. So you can see that the community is doing a lot for itself. But we are only calling on authority, looking at what the building. It is now a death trap. We all pass through this school, and if this is what our future generations are going to are going to, I think there is no future for the people of uh, the people. Just as we were about to leave the school, a parent. Muhammad Sophia accosted us and demanded to speak to the president. Yeah, as you can see, oh, it's very bad. The floor is not flawed. Even the roof, if it is raining, the children, they run to their houses. And uh, secondly, we don't have teachers. As you can see, the, the, the roof is. If uh, 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 the children sit here and it is raining, even the sun, it, it gets them. So please, please in the group here. We don't have teachers. And this is already, I guess, our uh, future generation. So that was Dakuripe uh, School. It's in the Savannah region, the Bole district. You saw the situation for yourself. I'll stay in the north. I'll take you to the Yendi district. There's a, a school called the Bini School. And this report was also filed March this year. So these are very recent, couple of months ago, situation. Mohamed Aminu Alabira visited the school. They have had to combine classes one to three in some instances. They don't have enough furniture. Learning is very difficult. This school is not too far from Yendi. There are many communities in the country without proper school structures, a situation that affects teaching and learning. For the pupils of Bini in the Yendi community, one would have said they are lucky to have a three-unit classroom block. But the structure, whilst inadequate, 
for all classes is also dilapidated. The school, established in 1996 by School for Life, still lacks infrastructure. Classes here are combined with two teachers teaching in tents, primal one and two, three and four, five and six are combined in a class. Residents are thus making a passionate appeal to the Yendi Municipal Assembly to come to their aid by providing them with befitting classroom blocks. The appeal was made when an old boy donated some teaching and learning materials to the school. The old student, Suleymana Baba, spoke to City News on what motivated him. Uh, my motivation behind giving out these items is in line with my plea to also see people grown up like me, grow more than how I am, and also to do more in order to support. If uh, we are now in a modern education, where if you hear uh, that this school is still using chalk to write on a blackboard, I don't think it's, it's very odd. As a teacher, you are trained a diploma degree holder, then you come and be writing on a blackboard. I don't think it's acceptable. But when we all put this little effort it, in one way or the other, maybe somebody might also see and come together or come in the aid of the school and we can get a new school to be established. Speaking on behalf of the Municipal Chief Executive for Yendi, the Deputy Coordinating Director Ibrahim Abdul Rahman applauded Taha Enterprise for the gesture and pledged to forward the concerns of the community to the Municipal Chief Executive. It's an addition to what the Municipal Assembly is doing to uplift the image of the people of Bini. Really, they have made a request for three additional for three unit classroom block and as i'm going to the office i will present the information to the honorable municipal chief executive and, uh, an individual institutions organization uh, who have the financial muscle and who are willing and capable to assist this particular school to grow and then be the standard of that of yendi and other institutions elsewhere the chief of bini bandana ahmed ayuba Zablim also thanked Taha for the gesture. He added his voice to the appeal for adequate infrastructure for the school. A son, a past student of Bini Primary School, has gone ahead and has looked back to see whether he can bring up the younger ones to his level and has come with learning materials. We are very grateful and thankful to Mr. Sule and Taha enterprise for uh, providing these learning materials to uh, Bini community. But I'm still appealing to all the district assembly, municipal assembly, all philanthropists, all those who have the means to come along and help Bini community so that the dilapidated classrooms will put up and then the children will have clean environment for learning. The head teacher of the school Nashiro Mustafa says the materials will help them in their work. He promised to put it to good use. The material will help the children to learn very hard. Sometimes when we are teaching them, the lack of learning materials, such as books, pencils, and what have you. Now that he has donated marvelous materials for us. We can also put it into good use. There was so much excitement among the pupils in the school. They appealed for classroom blocks and also school feeding programs for the school. Thank God for what they have given us. But still, we need more donations. We need classrooms, toilet and bath, school feeding teaching and learning materials. We want government to build classrooms. This is still the point of view. So that was uh, uh, Mohammed Alabira's report from Bini, a town not far from Yendi. So now on the point of view, we are showing you the state of infrastructure in basic schools across the country. We've taken you from the BA to the central 
We've shown you Savannah. And these are just one example per region. There are more we have. We're just showing you an example each per region. We just finished with North Image. When we come back, I'll take you to the Volta region. I have the Upper West region. We have the Ashanti region. We have the Greater Accra region with schools that have practically nothing. I'll also speak to two people who've been studying this. One of them did his PhD thesis in the area of deprivation in basic schools. The other is the executive director of the Africa Education Watch. Hopefully, they'll give us some key thoughts and answers. Stay with us. You own a business or a side hustle, but where does work happen? Is it in an office, a home, or on the move? Indeed, it's everywhere. Let your business go with you everywhere too. Welcome to the world of Kedeba, where we expose items in your inventory to new markets and a wider customer base for revenue generation. Kedeba keeps your company on the move and easily manages your team's activities for better performance even when you are away. Let's help you get that loan you're looking for using Kedeba and grow your company's profitability. So whether you are in a big or small business, think about it. Where can you work? Call us. Kedeba. Go mobile. Meet the all-new Hoptel. It's the very first time everything Hoptel has come together in a single and simple app across all devices. It's the simplest way to collect payments from a large group. From any Excel sheet to payments, straight to your bank account or mobile wallet. It's food when you're hungry and everything else from near you. Hoptel is simply everything you. Welcome back tonight on A Point of View. We're showing you the dilapidated state of some basic schools scattered across the country. We've taken you through a couple of regions. We'll take you to a few more regions. But let me just let you know that on the program tonight, I'll be speaking to Peter Antipati, who is the executive director of the Institute for Educational Studies. His PhD thesis was in educational resource deprivation. Peter will join us. Peter, good evening. If you are there, uh, can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening, Bernard. I'm here. It's good to have you. And I also have, of course, Kofi Asari of the Africa Education Watch joining us, not for the first time. Kofi, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, Bernard and Cherish audience. Great. Before I come to you, I just want to show a couple more reports because sometimes when we say that things are not well, they ask us to show evidence. People say there are no schools under trees. According to the report that you did, there are over 5,000 schools either under trees or sheds. So I just wanted to do two more regions. Let me take viewers to the Volta region. There's a town called Apesokubi. Apesokubi. This report was filed in March, just a couple of months ago. No furniture, not enough teachers. Students are not happy. Here's a report from Selassie this month ago. As many other rural areas in Ghana, access to quality education has become an issue in the educational sector. In these areas, basic facilities for children to access education are very poor and deplorable. Lack of school building and their facilities, lack of human resources to fulfill the minimal requirements of school instructors, long distance between homes and schools, lack of library facilities, computer labs, among other needs, have turned out to be the main obstacle for communities in rural areas in Ghana. Most of the existing schools are not well maintained posing as death trap for children and teachers to conduct their teaching and learning activities. Where there are classrooms, the lack of furniture also becomes another challenge, making these school children to sit and learn on the floor. It is a Friday afternoon and school children here at the Apesokubi EP Basic School are out on the football field for a match. Here, young talents are developed as part of the extracurricular activities of the school. They are happy and enjoying the football game. But immediately the game ends, academic activities begin in earnest. But most of the pupils here are not happy going to class. I've been speaking to some of the pupils and they tell me that, although they are happy to be in school, they have little to no furniture to sit and write on. Imano Ose Roja, 
a basic five people of the Apesokubi EP Basic School tells me that they are not happy about the situation. Because some, my, some of my friends are sitting three, three or four, four, and some are sitting on the floor. Even sometimes people are going home and their bottles will be dirty. I want Nana Akufuado to bring us desk so, so that our, our, my friends will be, sit, will be sitting right and so that they can write well. In the JHS section of the same school, the situation is not different. A desk meant for two is now occupied by four or even five. The students here also complain about the situation and want government to intervene. They also added that they need more teachers to complement the existing ones. This is Apisokubi EP Basic School. In fact, we are facing some challenges. We don't have teachers. We, we have only two teachers teaching us. We don't have Ghanaian language teacher, French, social and the rest. So we are, we are begging the government and the stakeholders to help us. Furniture is our problem here. Four people sit on one desk. Some are broken. We, we don't have fun in this class. And there is more heat in here. So we are begging the governments and stakeholders to come and help us. The Apesokobi EP Business School Management Committee Chairman, Mr. Henry Samuel Menza, told City News that efforts by the committee and the community to solicit for funds to provide furniture for the school have proven futile. You know that uh, the student must sit comfortably to be able to write must have good posture to be able to write. And if the furniture is not right, then it's going to affect the student. The student handwriting, you know, if the student is bent, it affects the writing. And where three or four students are sitting on one desk, you find that students as they are, they tickle each other and it ends up in a fight. And that impedes learning. Teachers have to shout. They have to waste teaching time to correct those mistakes that are happening within the students. So that's a very serious problem. He added that Calls have been made to the Ghana Education Service to come to the aid of their school, but they are yet to receive a response from them. So that was Apesukubi. Let me end with um, Sirigu in the Upper East region. This was a, a while back. Fred Awuni did a report, and this is quite serious. People sit on the floor. People sit on the floor to study. Not enough teachers. Classrooms in a very bad state. Established in 1967, the Sirigo Primary School currently has an enrollment of 267 pupils, made up of 133 boys and 134 girls. All pupils, with the exception of Primary 6, are compelled to lie on the bare floor to write during school hours due to the absence of furniture. The classrooms of primary one to four do not have windows and teachers sit on improvised tables and chairs to mark exercises. Because the school is not a beneficiary of the government school feeding program, pupils of the lower primary usually disperse to their various homes after 12 p.m., thus impeding academic work. Expressing their frustration to City News, some pupils of the school called on government to provide them with pieces of furniture. Class, 
Tinha o ascutio, a camela de congruã. So a beijia was a tigita. Some teachers of the school told City News the situation is impeding teaching, learning, as well as enrollment and needs urgent attention so by government. Our view is for the maybe the districts or the officials to help us if they can get us the feeding program for our school. And because of that, the attendance too is very low. It's very, very... The furniture, too, is a big issue. Most of the children are sitting on the floor, which is not good for this, our generation. If you say we are doing what the whites are doing, we have the new curriculum for the school, and the children are sitting on the floor, which is not good. So we have to... We are pleading with, the, with our leaders to come and help us to get the furniture for our... So that was um, Sirigu in the Upper East Region. Now, I'm being urged to show you one from Accra because we've done Central, we've done Upper East, we've done Northern Savannah, we've done BA, and we've also done Volta. So to, to, to show that this is not just happening in the hinterlands, this was a, a end of last year. Caleb could have visited a school we've been to before. This is a Osu, the La Salem Basic School. This was before the recent BEC, asking students about their preparation. Take note of the structures, and this is La in Accra. The La Salem Presby Basic School shares a wall with the La Presby Senior High School, where a former headmaster was transferred after granting City News interview over lack of infrastructure in the past. Eventually, a private individual came to their rescue, but the headmaster will pay the price for the interview that brought results. Today, an old student of the basic school who pleads anonymity has visited to donate furniture to his alma mater. The head teacher here is guided by history and will not attempt speaking to the media. While the formalities were ongoing, the corroded roofing sheets and a wooden structure that served as classrooms for JHS 1 to 3 caught my attention. I got closer and interacted with some of the pupils. They were fanning themselves with the exercise books. They were suffocating in the classroom they call an oven with wobbly desks. Our classroom infrastructure, it's like we are in a oven because the room is too hot. It's too hot. And then our cupboard, we can't store our books in it because the cupboard is broken. And then our desk is too that's so beautiful. Because we are too much in the class, we sit in three instead of two. Sometimes three. we also sit in two instead of four. At the time that there is COVID-19, you are trying to do social distancing. How do you feel? I'm not happy about the way things are going. Sometimes if you come in the mad people come and shoot you. Our books so they'll be using it to clean the books. Sometimes the, the teachers in the staff, they are plates and those things, they'll be shitting inside. Are you serious? Where do they find it? So inside the staff. And we'll be cleaning it. They break into it? Yes. Have you cleaned some yourself? Yes, sir. Yes. When was this? Sir, the last the la um, last week, the wedding is on Tuesday. At break time, they had lunch in the same classrooms they tell me they often come to clean up fecal matter. The meal of one of them, Wache, caught my attention. What are you eating? Wache. Where did you get it from? I want them back. Where? Yeah. How much was it? 15. Hmm? Yeah. What? Yeah, how much? No, how much was it? This. 15 cities? No, one five. One city, 50 pesos? Yes. Did you buy egg? No. Meat? No. Gary? No. Macaroni? No. <laughs> Fish? No. While others helped themselves with protein-less lunch, Susanna Abna Texan was marking scrapes of her colleagues. I asked her why. She revealed a deeper problem. Are you the class prefect? But is marking classwork part of your... Yes. Okay. I'm just helping the teacher. Okay. 
Do you have enough teachers? No. Why? I'm not sure why, but recently there was an ICT teacher who was serving as a service teacher. Mm -hmm. But um, after the first semester, he didn't come ah. this semester. So we haven't been taught ICT since we were from this semester. How long ago is this? About three four months. Three, four months, no, I see. in second semester on June. Right. So, since June. No ICT. ICT. We haven't been taught French since KG, P1, P2, P2. You've been in this school from KG? Yes. She's yet to get to final year. She loves her school and she wants something done. I love about the school is that the teachers. Well, that was the La Salem basic. So let me come to my guest, Kofi. I, I I don't know what you make of what we've been we've been showing. A few regions. There's so many more we didn't show. Are these isolated incidents, or the the research you do with with the education uh, NGO that you run? This is fairly prevalent in some of our communities. Um, yeah, Bernard, um, good evening once again to um, you and your cherished audience. I think um, it, these are no isolated incidents at all. Um, whatever was shown is a manifestation of the full picture of education service delivery, um, especially in the, in the countryside. As a matter of fact, um, some of the communities you showed are communities that I have worked in. I know the school in Sirugu, and I know very well the school in Tumfukro, which is close to Asimjakai, one of my communities I've been working in for the past 15 years. So, um, and that is in the constituency of the Deputy Minister of Education. Uh, so I appreciate that, yes, this is indeed the reality that exists in um, most of our schools in the countryside. But you see, this is a creation of gradual, I mean, years of neglect for basic education. Everything you are seeing is as a result of resource deficits. There are no resources to provide the facilities required to provide quality education. And so once you are constricting or restricting the disbursement of resources to expand infrastructure, to upgrade infrastructure, and to build infrastructure, then it means that over time, you are denying them of schools, you are denying them of decks, etc. In 2012, but now there are benchmarks for finance and education. And one of the benchmarks is that countries should be committing up to 6% of GDP towards education. In 2012, Ghana was committing 7.6% of its GDP towards education. Okay, as we speak, we are committing 4.6% of our GDP on education. It means that we have reduced the percentage allocation of education expenditure to GDP by about three percentage points between 2012 and today. That is for the GDP. Now, if you come to the education sector allocation itself, we are discussing basic education. So I just think it's basic education. I remember around 2008, basic education was receiving 55% of the total education sector budgeted resources, the envelope for the sector. Basic was receiving 55. As we speak today, basic is receiving about 40 or 41 percent of the expenditure. So from all angles, the country is investing less in education. And at the same time, the percentage that goes into education, I mean, out of the percentage that goes to education, basic education share has also been shrinking over time. This is why we are seeing what we are seeing. Is it true that we have over four, over 5,000 schools under trees, sheds, and dilapidated structures? In your report, you said 5,400. And three. 5,403 schools. Yes, under, under school sheds and dilapidated structures. The ministry commissioned the consultant to actually um, the, you know, the, um, 
enumerate or count the schools um, for the purpose of planning. And um, as a result of that, the GES MOE um, had a collaboration with the Vaco Trust Fund to support in the elimination of these schools or by extension, the construction of conducive buildings to replace such schools that took place under trees and shifts and dilapidated structures. Unfortunately, after two years or so of, the, of, of launching this initiative, which was aimed at eradicating all the schools in five years, which meant that um, an amount of 3.5 billion Ghana cities was required to, to build all these 5,403 schools. Um, after two and a half years or two years after we are in the second year and only 16 of the schools um, have been constructed. So um, some effort is being made, but obviously if we continue at the pace that we are, we are um, to re remove the schools and the trees, it will take about 120 years or so if we are going to build, if we are going to build 14 schools in 14 schools to replace schools and the trees every one and a half years or two years, then um, and it, 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 it is not a priority. I don't see it as a priority. Wow. So yes, that is the data from the Ministry of Education, not our data. Okay. We will come back to you for some solutions. I'll take a break. When I come back, I'll also speak to Peter Antipate, who's been studying these issues. These are very grave matters indeed. Over 5,000 schools in very dark conditions at the basic level. What can we do to salvage education? Stay with us. Bell Beverages, Bell Chill and Wind Promotion in Amafi 2022 year are yet there. To our favorite Bell drink, say a Tamarinda, Bell Cola, Puka, Big Boss, Squeeze, Breeze, Bell Malt, and a Deke Kahubia. Why we're washing so the other 20. Fashion and Lukum Chowudin and no contact a Kaho. A fake Fako Bell Beverages Depot, and I say one accredited distributor, sir. One more or memoir fana bebia. Uwe to me dia chedi epi ewa bell chill and wind promotion na yeyedi wa TV, radio, and a social media so. A chedi epi te se, demo ni ema bibri ya wope, bell product wa chedi epi bibri, and a kradia uwe to me dia kodidja. Na final raffle draw no, uwe to me di kia pekanto, emo no chiao. Bell chill and wind promotion dia, wopi ya ye winner, sa upe munche che mubi ya, friend, 0544-335-800. A face of Kayo, Sir Bell Beverages, and what you mean again, so FDA, a Jigridian Kratui Atum. Mamma Josie. Ah, the fair, fair. Ah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Kel charcoal toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Chocolate toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy smile. For generations, Ghanaians have had one thing in common, and that's the way we start our day. Wherever your day will take you, start with the energy from Cadbury Richoco, made from the finest Ghanaian cocoa. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back. Tonight on A Point of View, we're showing you some images from across the country regarding the state of basic school infrastructure. Quite depressing, I should say. Let's talk to Peter Antipate. Peter is the executive director of the Institute for Education Studies. Peter, you studied this in your PhD thesis. What else do you know that we haven't shown so far in relation to the dire condition of some of our basic schools? Uh, thank, thank you very much. Um, uh, mostly, when we talk about uh, deprivation, we tend to focus on infrastructure and uh, 
if you even you go to GES, they look at deprivation from the point of view of the location of the school. So you have deprived schools because they are in deprived districts. So we decided to look at how um, the uh, SDGs measures uh, quality education. And if you look at the, the indicators, you see that there are other 13 variables aside location that can be used to really determine whether a school, a basic school is deprived or not. And so that is what, what, I, what I did. And it's, it will interest you, I've, I decided, I wanted to show a map that for the past four years, I mean, uh, consistently four academic years, we have seen a deterioration of our basic education uh, school system, which is uh, unmatched. And, and, and it's, it's cut across teacher distribution, textbooks allocation, library books, nature of school buildings, teacher student ratio, student to dex ratio, and all the other variables that the uh, international community looks at. And that, that, is, that is very depressing. Interestingly, the strategic plan of Ghana for education, which stands from 2018 to 2030, looks at a situation whereby we would want to provide quality education for all students at all levels. At the same time, we want to improve access to education. And if we would want, if we want to achieve these two critical um, objectives of the strategic education, education strategic plan, then we will need to really understand how we are distributing resources in terms of uh, uh, in, in, in our basic education structure. But unfortunately, as Kofi uh, actually, uh, stated, we have seen a deterioration of the or a reduction of the budget for that particular sector. And that is causing a great disservice to all instances, to the students that are assessing basic schools, especially at the public uh, level. So we shouldn't limit this to infrastructure. You're saying learning material, availability of teachers, time on task, and all those other variables for quality education are also as seriously lacking, not just infrastructure. Exactly. And that is how you measure deprivation in terms of basic education. Because if you limit it to infrastructure, you would not, and that's, that is what the GS is doing now. So in the coming months, some of us will be pushing for the adoption of this new measure. Because you will see that if you limit it to that, you, you would have a school that might have um, a, a certain kind of infrastructure. But then the other ingredients that goes into measuring quality education would not be there. And we will need to pay attention to all those variables to be able to state that this school is deprived and that school is not deprived. And if you do that, and you, if your producers will share the map that I've shared with them, you will see that we have, it, it's something that cuts across all the regions in Ghana. Most of our regions are deteriorating in terms of basic schools, especially at the public level. And that it's not only for infrastructure or the nature of school building. It's cut across 14 different indicators of quality education. Let me read a couple of comments. Seth from Winneba says, Hi, Bernard. Please ask heads of basic schools in urban areas the last time they received capitation grants, lesson notebooks, and textbooks. The findings of challenging heights on basic education in central region are true. <laughs> then here's another one. They have collapsed basic education, and now they are asking grade A schools to cause magic to prove they are good. Education is in an all-time mess. This is Joe from Tema. Bernard, until we have a law that restricts MPs and government appointees from sending their school to private schools who always face these problems. That's another one. Kofi Asai, of all the funny stories I saw, you posted something recently that somebody had gone to a KVIP in a school and had his scrotum beaten by a snake. I mean, is this for real? Where did this happen? At the Fosu College of Education. Oh, yeah. he he yeah. he had the scroll. Too. Actually, I actually saw a release, a release from the schools, the schools management. Um, yes, uh, on Friday, uh, clarifying that the KVIP was actually an abandoned one, and then um, the student was on the frolic on his own, and then listed the abandoned KVIP, and then he suffered that particular um, 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 incident. But I'm told he is now um, he survived. Recovered. What's, yeah, the most, right. what's the most important thing that needs to happen to change this within the quickest possible time? The situation we just yeah. described. 
immediately we need to uncap the get fund the finance minister has capped the get fund and receivables to into the get fund only about 25 percent of the get fund receivables ends up being allocated to the education sector out of that sometimes less than half is disbursed at the end of the year we need to uncap the get fund and free resources for developing the basic education infrastructure. In addition to that, the Ministry of Education must prioritize basic education. The priority now is secondary education. We've seen $1.5 billion, that's about 12 billion Ghana cities being invested in the secondary education infrastructure through a loan that was secured after Get Fund was partially securitized. We are happy to see such special purpose vehicles you know, for basic education too. If we have that done within three years, we can see um, the end of this whole menace of schools under trees and schools without desks, etc., etc. All right, Peter. Let me give you the last word. What's your number one recommendation? In addition to what Kofi has said, we need to profile our educa basic education. I mean, especially at the public level, we need a complete profiling of our basic education. We have the data there. The MAs have all that kind of data. We will just have to profile our basic education, group them into deprived and non-deprived using modern indicators so that we will now know how we reallocate resources. We need to now apply equity instead of equality and then push resources to schools or public basic schools that needs these resources that needs these resources instead of um and um, pushing them to places where we'll get votes or we that, that already have i think that is what we need to do as early as possible thank you peter Antipate, executive director of the institute for educational studies kofi asari executive director africa education watch thank you gentlemen We've been taking you across the country. We went to the BA Central. We went to Volta, Upper East, Northern Savannah, and ended in the Greater Accra region. The situation is dire. A lot needs to be done. Thank you for watching The Point of View. Coming up next is the Business Dashboard. Stay with us.